Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. So this video is about Hyper PLA. What is it, why, and how would I want to use it on my Bamboo Lab X1C for printing quality functional parts even faster? Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and we do do subscriber giveaways and you can buy files for these airplanes on our website. So I was cruising the internet and I came across this Creality Hyper PLA. Sounded pretty good and it wasn't that expensive and it was promising high speed printing. Like really high speed, 600 millimeters per second. So I thought maybe some high speed filament would take my fast printing up a notch to even higher speed. All right, so let's dive into the details and find out what this material is all about. So this Hyper PLA has promise, but the Bamboo Labs XC1 already prints really fast with regular PLA using the Sorecraft PLA configuration. I can print an entire plane in a third the time of my older printer. And not only fast, but really nice too. But I know my stock printer can be even faster. Just looking at the slicer speed and flow color maps and seeing that the max speed is only around 150 to 160 millimeters per second and is restricted by the max volumetric speed of the material. There's also some other areas that can be improved, but I don't want to go too fast and make weak parts. So Creality has some information on their website about this material, but not very much. And Creality is not the only one. There's some other materials out there that are also claiming to be hyper or high speed from other manufacturers. There's like a whole new category for this filament. Engineering properties are very similar to a PLA plus, which is a blend of PLA and another material to increase ductility, which means it's not as stiff, but it's a little stretchy before it breaks, which is fantastic because PLA plus makes really good airplane parts. It's durable and easy to print with the only required setting change from regular PLA is to increase the nozzle temperature. Okay, so chances are that 600 millimeters per second print speed might be a little overly optimistic. Then in Bamboo Labs, the true speed setting for a material is the maximum volumetric speed. The actual linear speed is secondary to this volumetric speed. There is no mention of max volumetric speed with Creality Hyper PLA. It's this maximum flow rate through the print nozzle that really sets the print speed maximum. And these are the typical line width and layer heights for printing airplane parts. So at 30 millimeters cubed per second equates to 300 millimeters per second print speed. An easy volume divided by area to get velocity. Now we can modify this and change the layer height to 0.1 and it more than doubles the possible print speed. But at the same time, you have to print two and a half times as many layers to get the same height. So this 600 millimeters per second is kind of misleading or meaningless without the numbers to go with it. Polymaker's material Polysonic is the only material that I could find that even mentions volumetric speed as a specification and might be worth a closer look. Mm -hmm. 
So we need a maximum volumetric speed number for this material. The good news is I was able to use the Orca Slicer Calibration Flow Rate Tester and test this material on my Bamboo X1C from 20 to 30 millimeters cube per second. Now the printing speed was never over 150 millimeters per second, but we did figure out the maximum volumetric flow speed to be around 27 millimeters cubed per second. But don't forget to adjust your nozzle temperature to the material you're using. And in this case, I set it to 230. So that was easy enough that I decided to do a baseline with the PLA that I usually use to see where it's at. So comparing the approximate height of where it starts to have a problem equals 18 millimeters cubed per second. So the Hyper PLA can flow 50% more material through the same stock Bamboo Lab XC1 extruder. Impressive. <laughs>
Orca Slicer has another calibration tool called the VFA, or Vertical Fine Artifacts Tool. Now, it's not really designed for quickly figuring out the max outer wall acceleration, but it has similar features to what we're trying to print. In doing some comparisons at different acceleration values, you can find the limit of the material and the speeds you want to run. And so after doing some variations and some printing and seeing a tiny imperfection starting to develop, I figured this was good enough to try out on a regular set of parts and see what happens. And then with the hyper PLA and the faster flow and the higher speed and the higher acceleration, we get a whopping 15% faster print speed. Oh well. Well, let's try it out anyways. So I did notice some wisps of strings in between the parts, which is from the part to part travel moves, which is a little bit more than usual. So the parts did come out dimensionally correct and the little hairs on everything did pretty much rub off. The parts were strong and flexible with only minor surface imperfections every once in a while. But I can't help being disappointed in such a small reduction in overall print time with this hyper material. So there's some additional time savings I found while researching this video. With this material not being very oozy like the foaming materials, you don't really need to have the avoid crossing walls turned on and they can reduce the travel times, saving in this case 10%. Another place to look to save print time is the carryover of the minimum layer time. This was to keep from overheating quick layers and since there is little or no infill in these parts, most layer print times are very short when only printing one part, especially wingtips. And you easily hit the threshold to slow things down. Reduced fan was also used on parts to help with layer adhesion and slow cooling to reduce brittleness. Well, with this faster printing and specific material tuning, we can turn up the fan speed and turn off this minimum layer time and keep the printer running at top speed. Now, this may not work for every part and every material, but this wingtip printed very well in half the time and is still very strong and flexible. And it's just regular PLA running at regular PLA speeds. Then, of course, there's ludicrous speed. The same part started at regular speed to get good bed adhesion. And then after several good layers, I turned it up to ludicrous speed. Now the print time shown on screen was pretty far off. It ended up being about 50 minutes from the time I switched, but it saved an additional 20%. And the part turned out better than expected. Even though you can clearly see there is a difference between the ludicrous speed part, functionally, it was still strong and flexible. It just had more surface imperfections. So faster print times are possible, but hyper or high speed materials are not the direct answer I was looking for. They probably will help, but would not be worth a premium, well, at least not for these types of parts. Large, 100% fill parts maybe. Optimizing accelerations and other functions did more to reduce print times than max speed in high flow. These machines are already really fast and it is possible to push them faster, but the next doubling or tripling of speed will need another leap of progress. 
Researching and making this video taught me a lot, and I will be trying these techniques out on other materials in upcoming videos. So please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Ha ha ha!